Well, my name is Francis Tiki, and this is Radiance Dairy. Um, we are an organic dairy and uh, mostly grass based, and we milk about 90 cows, and we have about 160 head of all ages. Uh, we're, we're unique in that we process our milk on the farm. Um, so we make bottled milk and yogurt and cheese, and we market it almost all locally. We started out here actually with 176 acres and put it all in pasture. We have about 60 paddocks, so the cows get fresh grass twice a day after each milking. Um, and then as time went on, some land surrounding us became available, and incrementally we bought some more land, and um, now we have 730 acres. So we do some cropping, organic cropping as well. So the cows get fresh grass twice a day, and so we, we try to manage the pastures so that as they rotate around the pastures, um, it regrows and it's, it's fresh and ready for them uh, the next time we rotate through the pastures. And it takes a lot of management to actually make that happen because in the spring, the grass grows very fast. And so um, we can rotate more quickly around the pasture. So we use a smaller area. And some of the area uh, in the periphery, we will make hay on for in the winter. And then as it gets hotter and drier in the summer, we slow the rotation down so the grass has longer, more time to regrow a longer rest period. And that's the biggest mistake most grazers make is that they don't slow the rotation down. And so um, eventually it gets faster and faster and faster because the grass is shorter and shorter. But if you give it longer rest, it can regrow. And then um, it helps to build um, the soil as well um, because a deeper rooted, a, de a taller pasture is deeper rooted. And so it'll help to build the soil. If you, if you graze your pasture down to very short, your roots will be very shallow. And so you're not going to really be building your soil. So we try to actually do it, mimic the process that the bison uh, in the prairies um, really interacted in in the model that created our rich soils. Iowa is famous for having, they claim to have the best soils in the world. Um, but think about it, 12,000 years ago when the last glacier left northern Iowa where the best soils are, there was no soil at all. It was a geologic wasteland. That material from Canada and, and Minnesota had, had, had been scraped off and dropped here in Iowa. And, it, and there was, so there wasn't any soil at all. So over that 12,000 years, as plants and animals colonized that geologic material, it created this rich soil. So that's an ecological process. And so we try to mimic that here in this farm. And one of the part of it is, is that um, the prairie grasses were very tall and very deep rooted. But when the bison would come through and graze it off, then it was short and it didn't need all that root mass. And so um, it sloughed some of that off in the ground. And so it grow a new top, more roots. And so those episodes of grazing of the bison would were actually a big part of the contributing, uh, contributed to the deep rich soils here in Iowa. So we try to mimic that process here on our farm, is we give the cows just as much grass as they can eat in half a day, and then, and then we leave, take them off, like the bison leaving, and then it can regrow and more, develop more roots, and so we're building the soil back up. This land, if you look at it, it's pretty hilly. This had all been in corn and soybeans when we bought this land in 1995. And so, so it was very eroded on the hillsides all the topsoil was gone. It was down to the B horizon, down to the subsoil. And so we're kind of almost like the glacier just left and we're starting over. And so we're rebuilding the soil um, using that same ecological process that built them in the first place. I think it's important, the microbial life in the soil is very important. And I think that one thing that's helpful is to have a lot of diversity. Because if you have diversity, then the microbes that, that are symbiotic with the different plants um, will all thrive. So we feed about five or six pounds of grain per head per day in the barn. And part of that is because our milking parlor is set up so that we kind of bribe them to come into the barn with a little bit of grain. And, um, but basically, it's about, they get about 70 to 80% of their dry matter intake from grass in the summertime. National Organic Standards require dairy cows or ruminants to get at least 30% of their dry matter intake, that people call it DMI, from grass. And we know that when cows are on grass, the milk and meat is higher in omega-3 fatty acids and other beneficial nutrients. When the cows are on grass, they're a lot healthier. My oldest cow, I just finally, I, when they get, if they get 10 years old and they milk for 10 years, we retire them, put them out in pasture. But they gotta make 10 years. But we, my oldest cow just uh, was 16 years old and still milking. And the average cow will milk for two and a half years in a confinement kind of a system. So when cows are on pasture, we have a number of them that are 10, 12 years old. Um, they, they live a lot longer. As a matter of fact, I had somebody visiting our farm here a couple of years ago, and she used to milk cows in a confinement dairy, and she said, how can those cows walk out to pasture? She said, the farm I worked on, she said the cows couldn't walk at all. They had such four feet. And I'm, I'm a little concerned that many organic dairy farmers are just shooting for 30% dry matter intake when they could easily feed 70 to 80% dry matter intake from pasture. And now a lot of dairy farmers seem to be going to 
total mix rations. So they're feeding them after milking, for example, a lot of corn and silage and soybeans and so on, and um, filling them up before they go out in the pasture so that they don't really have a lot of um, desire to graze, or maybe they don't provide them a lot of pasture. Um, we we kind of, like I said, we bribe them to come into milk, and then they know they're going to get fresh grass after milking, so they're usually pretty um, eager to get out in the pasture. Sometimes they'll start running to get to the grass. Well, considering cows in pasture, there are really a lot of benefits, and one of them is, is the energy. You know, the design is important. I mentioned we have 60 paddocks, and we have lanes coming up through them. So all we have to do to get the cows in the next pasture is open the gate, and it crosses, it, it closes the lane off, and the cows are shunted into the paddock, and then we close the gate. And so the cows do all the, all the work. They harvest their own feed, they spread their own manure where it needs to be, and they, they enjoy their work. And um, they're healthier because of that. Now compare that with cows on concrete where you have to harvest all the feed and bring it to the cows and then to harvest, then collect all the manure and haul it back out to the fields. And those are all en energy intensive kind of things to do. And probably we never ha would have done that if it weren't for cheap oil. We'd like to eventually be self-sufficient for energy. And so we have a 40K wind turbine on the farm and um, we have some solar applications now. We wanna have more in the future. One solar application we have is for pumping water for the cows. Um, we have 60 paddocks and we have a tank that cows can access from all the paddock, each, each paddock. And um, the water comes from a pond that's in an organic watershed and that's pumped up to a 6,000 gallon tank. And then the water gravity feeds to all the pastures from that 6,000 gallon tank. We seem to have a glut of organic milk today and there are several reasons for it. One is that we have these big confinement CAFOs, concentrated animal feeding operations that are being approved for organic and are questionable whether they're really meeting the grazing rule. But another one is that um, the, the organic standards are written so that once you're established as an organic dairy farm, all the cows have to be from organic mothers, from organic farms. And there's um, a little loophole that people are trying to claim is there that allows them to um, buy conventional cows and then convert them to organic within one year. And that works well for, for them because they can buy conventional cows that are one year from milking, one year from milking age, and then just feed them organic for a year and then they can be organic. And the problem with that is that I think that's really against the uh, the spirit and the letter of the organic standard. So in the real organic standard add-on to the National Organic Program, um, <clears throat> it, cows are not allowed to be transitioned from conventional to organic, except for a one-time herd conversion of a whole herd. If, it, <clears throat> for example, an existing dairy farm is conventional and they want to go organic, they can convert that herd to organic, a one-time thing. Thereafter, they can't convert any conventional cows to organic. They have to be raised within the herd. That's the, the essence of, of the the Real Organic Program Standard.